Hey YouTube, Mike the Renai Guy here. How are we all doing today? I hope we all have a safe and productive week and we're all enjoying installing our endless hot water in our units. All right, today's video is going to be on a code 10. What's a code 10? A code 10 is air blockage. So basically, you're having a problem getting the either air or the correct amount of air into the unit to make combustion. So there's a couple of faults that could happen to cause this code. Now, the pretty much the best best problem that you could have is a bad fan. So the fan is not either spinning or spinning correctly to bring air into the unit. Remember, you need a fuel, you need an ignition, and you need air to make combustion, just like your car, gasoline, diesel, your truck, whatever. It works the same way. So, if you have a bad fan, that would like, be the best problem with the co tent because what you would do is you know, I'm just going to use this exterior unit as a demo. Let me just move this out of the way. So, with your exterior unit, okay, that's your fan box. As you can see, you got that hole right here at the bottom that brings the air in through the bottom of the burner and makes combustion. So, this fan is sitting down there right like that. It's just three screws. Remember this plug is always facing the PC board. The PC board's right here. So once you remove the, see you got three screws. One, two, three. Once you remove those three screws, you take it out. You could see, you can actually even leave it plugged in. You can see if the fan is spinning. Because if you pop the relief valve with this powered up, this fan is going to spin. It's going to try to clear the chamber of gas. So you could see this spin. Now, once you take this out, and this now is in your hand, you can actually see how this fan is spinning. See, it's not spinning so true. See how it's spinning? Then again, this thing has been a demo fan for a year and two years so of course it's been beat up but you want to check to see how true the fan is spinning if it's spinning is there an obstruction in it you know it could be spinning making a lot of noise and there could be lizard uh, bugs in there bees in there dirt daub particles like it's like a mud that could be in there now on your interior unit now this is a brand new heat exchanger and I have the fan box off of it, you're going to find the fan to be back to the bottom also. And as you can see, you got that hole right there that brings air up into, you see inside here, you have all those little holes right here. That's where the burner is sitting on. So the burner is sitting on that and it brings air up through here, through the burner, makes the combustion and then goes out the top. We're going to get into this in a second. On an exterior unit, the fan is, the air is brought in through the actual chassis and then the exhaust is pushed out here. You could also have a blockage in the heat exchanger. It's not actually exiting, the, it's not exiting, it's not getting out the gas, the carbon monoxide. So the burner, right here, sits in, let's see if we can see this, let me move this over a little bit, so the burner is actually sitting in here, right through here, well I'll show you this one, this one is a better example, let me just slide this over, move the fan, the burner. See this slides right in 
through here like that. I'm not going to push it in because it will get locked in there. So that's the way it slides in. And air comes up through these bottom holes and through the burner. So now, you check for obstructions. We're going to go with this exterior unit and the burner, and then we'll go to the interior unit and the dry erase board. So now, you take you have your fan out, you check it, it, good, you had it out, it's still plugged in, you turned on the power, and the fan spun, you want to check the burner. You want to take the burner out, remember you have a back gasket here, there's two screws, and actually you can see them from the back, you see these two holes right there, one there and one there, that's where the burner mounted got the two little recesses, that's where your screwdriver goes through, and that's where you're going to pull the burner out. You have the two holes right here. So, you have your burner out, make sure you have your eye protection and your mask. You want to grab, and as you can see, how beat up this brush is, this is what we use. You want to scrape off the top of the burner. Just give it a little like that. It'll loosen up whatever debris is in there. And you want to start scraping off the bottom. If you go to Harbor Freight and pick up one of those welder, it's a metal piece. I don't happen to have one. I left it on my work truck but it's for welder tips. They're little files, round files. You can poke, you can find the right size one and you can clear up these holes because as you can see the holes are they're specifically designed. There's not a whole load of holes. You see how they're designed? They're designed for it to fire in low and high fire. So you want to scrape this out real good then you want to take some compressed air, at least a hundred pounds, and blow it out. Blow it out. Let me give it a second here because we don't need this on. So now you cleaned your burner. You put your burner back in. Now, on an interior unit, an interior unit gets a little tricky because you have on a non-condensing unit you have your fan box and your fan same fan but you have a box that comes down on the side that brings the air in you also have your this is your exhaust, and you see these right here? These are your air intakes. So, what you need to do, because on this piece, there's a plate and another box that gets actually screwed to these top four holes. And then that box comes down and what draws the air in from the concentric vent pipe. So let's draw this a second. Now, remember, on non-condensing, it's metal inside. So, we have our, we're just going to go with a front view. You have your outer white color, and then your inner metal. Because remember, with the non-condensing, this is the regular V or RL series. You're going to use the concentric venting. There's no option like on a Sensei that has the vent in the middle, and then an ex the fresh air on the left. So, this is where your exhaust is coming out. This is where your air is coming in. So let's just say we have our wall. Then we have our vent pipe coming through. And then your elbow down into the unit. 
right? So this is an elbow that comes in the horizontal vent, and then that's the piece that comes through, and this is actually backwards, like that, and then you have a little piece here. All right? So this here is that, this here is where the fresh air comes in. You need, let's see, let me zoom in on it so you can get a better, better view of that. There we go. Okay. So, your exhaust is going out and your fresh air is coming in because you have another pipe that goes like that. So your exhaust is exiting through here and then your fresh air is coming in here. You need to remove this vent or look inside of it and see if there is any buildup. Here in Florida we get these things called mud daubers or dirt daubers and they get in there. They love this part of the vent because there's a lot of fresh air coming in. Nice, it's like air conditioning for these bugs. They love it. Also, what we find is you have your wall, and you'll find this almost anywhere. Then you have your vent that comes through the wall, and you have your escutcheon, your pipe, your other escutcheon, and then your elbow down into the unit. And then you have your wall right here. So you have your inner pipe and your outer pipe. So let's zoom back a minute and show you what happens with this thing. What happens is the lizards, the geckos, crawl up the wall, crawl around the pipe, and into the vent. They get in there, then you have the fan box that comes down the side here, which goes to the fan. And that little SOB gets in there, and gets in that fan and now it doesn't know how to get out. The fan starts spinning and he's going for an amusement ride. I have found them mostly dead, but I have found a lot of them alive in there. I found two to three in there. And one of the indications may not even be a code 10. It might be just an extremely annoying vibration that the unit is shaking the walls. So that's one um, problem. If you have a lot of bushes in front, a tree, and there it's in front of the unit, it's gonna suck in all of that dust and debris off of that tree into the unit. And that's what's gonna most likely clog up the burner ports to give you that code. It's going to clog up the port. Now on a interior unit, remember you have that plate here. So that's going to clog up the plate. So what happens now? You take out the vent and if you get the vent apart, play lottery. Because remember, when those two metal pieces mate to each other, if you want to remove it pretty like right away to cut it and then reinstall it while you're doing the original installation, that's one thing. It's been sitting on the house for three, four, five years. Those metal pieces adhere to themselves. So it's pretty hard if you're going to get it. So make sure you have a new vent on the truck. So now, once you get this off, if you have debris in the actual air box, because there's a plate 
with about 10 screws on the front of an interior unit. You can remove that. You can look in there. You can see. You're going to get yourself a small vacuum. We carry... Now remember, you can use the vacuum as a blower too, to blow out. But again, eye protection and respiration. You don't want that yellow and green and blue dust in your lungs. Plus, ah, it doesn't taste good either. So now, you have this small little port for your vacuum. You're going to need to get down in the vent. You're going to need to get down in here, but as you can see, it doesn't fit. So we have, you can find little, like, especially if you had those, if you have those mud daubers, or you might get an actual lizard in here, or bees. You get those, the little grabber, the thing you push the button, and it opens up the prongs you can grab something with, and you're going to sit there like operation and pulling out the little pieces. We actually affix a piece of 3-8 um, tubing and, and, and Gorilla Tape to this. And we sit there and vacuum out the little pieces one at a time. Vacuum and grab it, throw it. Vacuum and grab it, throw it. So it could take you an hour to clear this out. It's, it's a real pain in the neck. I mean, with a powerful vacuum, you will suck up most of the dust and the debris. You'll get it around there. And, of course, you're going to have the regular vent off of it and you're going to clean that out but during an initial inspection by getting up on a ladder and getting a flashlight in there you could see and then if you do have the vacuum on the truck you can actually start vacuuming out from the ins outside sucking it back out in you know towards you um, you want to get up in this heat exchanger you want to get up in that heat exchanger with that vacuum brush attachment. Remember, you don't want to stick your wand up in here and start messing around with the wand because you're going to bend the fins. If you do happen to, you're going to have to put a brush in there, use a soft bristle brass brush and very easy, blow it out. You might have to reverse the vacuum or your compressor and blow air from the top down out. What we do in that case is we actually take a plastic garbage bag. We put the plastic garbage bag over this when we blow out. Or on an exterior unit, we tape a plastic garbage bag over this and blow air up into here or reverse the vacuum and blow it out. But that's what you're going to need to check on the initial uh, call when you get there. First thing, like I said, you want to check is you want to check the fan. The fan is the first thing because the fan could be defective or not spinning correctly. On some of the older models, there was actually a fan sensor built into this. Check the fan sensor. It, was, it, it, it almost looks like a thermistor, and it has a plate on it with one of those sheet metal screws. Remove it, clean it, put it back in, try it again. But with my experience with the Code 10, is you're going to have the problem with the actual airflow through the unit. So with this, I would highly recommend, of course, having your parts, extra fan, um, gasket, your, your, your gasket material, extra screws, have your parts, your tool bag, your parts bag, have all that, and once you check the fan, then pull the burner, pull the plate, pull off the gas valve plate, pull off the top plate, and pull your burner, and start doing your inspection. Your flashlight, look up you can see and then go through the process of cleaning the burner, 
blowing it out, vacuuming it out, just dropping it a little bit just to loosen. Remember, don't pick it up and drop it. Just pick it up a little bit and drop it on your work table. Remember, we use that um, DeWalt folding work table. We have that on the truck. That's what we use all the time. They're a nice, nice surface to work on. Have your rags, and I cannot stress with your eye protection and your respiration. All right? So then, of course, then the process of putting everything back together. Getting your gaskets back on for your top plate, which is the small plate here that has the viewing port. It has the two flame rods and the igniter. And then you have your actual burner plate that has all of the orifices and the solenoids on it. Get that all back together. Get your, make sure you don't lose your O-ring for the gas valve. Okay, so I think I might have a loose one in here somewhere. Did I have one? Nope. No, I thought I had a loose one. So make sure you don't lose that. Get that all back together and then fire it back up. And that is, would, will definitely cure your Code 10 problem. So let's look at the Code 10 on the actual um, code troubleshooting sheet. All right, it's not, a, it's not a big code, it's not like code 12, where, you know, is quite a bit on code 12, but code 10 is a small amount. So, it's an air supply or exhaust blockage. So, your exhaust, that is your exhaust coming through the heat exchanger and out the center. Because the airflow will not work. It won't go through. It won't go through. Because remember, the exhaust is also, besides the flame heating the heat exchanger, the fins are there to design to absorb the heat and absorb the carbon monoxide back into the heat exchanger to heat up the heat exchanger to give you hot water. So, Ensure approved venting material are used. Now, why? Why is that? Why do I always stress? I mean, this thing is annoying the hell out of me. Hold on a second here. All right. Huh. Okay. Why do I always stress the two vents? Non-condensing, metal inside, condensing. So, the, like the Sensei series. It has the plastic inside and the plastic outside, or what it says PP in the model number, or on the box, it says for condensing tanklesses only. If you put the plastic on a non-condensing unit, you will melt plastic and get down into the actual air intake. And there's your first problem. So that is, and, and once that's in there, you might as well just take the tankless off the wall because it is impossible to get out, especially if it gets down into this top. Because this top right here is not removable. This is pressed in to the heat exchanger. All right, we use a hammer and a chisel when we take these out and junk them. We use a hammer and chisel to separate this stuff. So the burner box, the heat exchanger, and then the top is pressed in and there's clips in there. You're not removing it, all right? So if plastic has gotten down into that, you're up the creek without that paddle. Bob is not your uncle. All right, check that nothing is blocking the flue inlet or exhaust. That is the tree. I have had bushes and trees like growing around the vent covering it totally and then of course stuff that's inside of it check all vent components for proper connections that could also cause if it's if it's not pushed in all the way you will be drawing the carbon monoxide back around so if your if your connection is not all the way in like this. You will be drawing the carbon monoxide back around into your fan again. And you're going to be using carbon monoxide 
for combustion. Now, that will make another annoying, obscene sound. So that is going to, and it's a sound, it's, it's hard to replicate or duplicate it, but it's a sound that you'll know something is not right. All right? So, it, all vent components are proper connections. That's something you gotta check, and that's another reason that you put those little number eight by half inch screws through that boss into from one white into the other, so prevent it from popping out. All right, ensure vent length is within limits. Now, on the PC board, there's dip switches. The dip switch will tell you, all right, and you can actually go down to, I'll tell you right now. All right, you got altitude, and then you got length right here. So it'll tell you if you have a long length or a short length of vent piping. You make sure that's set. Then you have, and then um, again, then the next one is verify dip switches are set properly. And that's for like, from the factory is short length and then you have long length. You also have altitude too. So, if you look down here, where the hell are we? Here we go. You have 0 to 2,000 feet, 2,100 to 5,200, 5,201 to 77, 7,701 to 10,300. And it's called level 0, level 1, level 2, level 3. And then it'll tell you, it'll show you right here what dip switches to, to turn on and off. Okay, and this is the paper inside the front cover in the plastic bag. Th that, that doesn't give you all of this in the instruction manual. Again, remember, this is the instruction manual on steroids. Okay, then the next one is check fan for blockage. That was one that's, that's, that's really like... That's at one, two, three, four, five. that's number six. There's seven total. I like it to be like number one. Because if the van is, if van, listen to me, if the fan is blocked, not working, or obstructed, like I said, that is the easiest fix right there. Then the last one is your burner sensor. And you're gonna go to number 31. Now, burner sensor. You're going to check the ohms in that, and if it's not reading the correct ohms, you're going to s change it. I have never had a burner sensor. Everything we've ever had was the um, either critters in the fan, and once we removed the critters, we carried tweezers. The tweezer them out, and then blow it, then take your compressor. Blow it out. See, it's still spinning. Check all the veins. Make sure there's nothing in there. No B wings or body parts or whatever. Take them out. Get that in there and then get the fan back in and try it. But when you have the fan out, get in there with your flashlight and check the fan box. You see here on an exterior unit, that's where the air is being brought in, right there. It goes in through the chassis. If you, if you look on an exterior unit, there's on the bottom of the front cover, there's louvers. And that's where the air, and that comes in through the back. So you want to check this fan box for any debris in there. Also, you want to look inside of the chassis on the bottom. Look, you're going to find all kinds of stuff in there. Take your vacuum, vacuum that out, because eventually that's going to make its way into the fan. And it's going to make its way into the burner, into the heat exchanger, and then you're back to a code 10. Okay? So, that is your... Um, now, as far as you going to... You don't need to shut the water off to do this, 
but you do need to shut the um, electric off and you're going to need to shut the gas off. That's going to be your first thing. So that actually should have been the first, but you know, doing this for so long, it's pretty much like muscle memory for us to shut everything down. But you don't really, you don't need to shut the water off because you're not going to be removing the heat exchanger or any water components. Okay, so that is your code ten. Follow the the steps, the seven steps in the pamphlet in the front cover and have your parts, your tools, your gasket set all ready so that you can rebuild this. You denature alcohol to clean off the gasket glue, put everything back together. Now, I can tell you that on a lot of instances, the only gasket that we really replace is the gasket that houses the two flame sensors and the igniter because that thing is pretty deteriorated. Uh, but I've had units three, four years old. We took them off, they were still in perfect condition, nice and fluffy, went right back on without a problem. Bob was your uncle. So, okay. All right, YouTube. Um, again, I'd like to thank everybody for all of those just outstanding comments that you are posting and emails that you send me. My family and I are greatly appreciated with it. Um, and my email will be below. If you have a question or you would like a Renai Guy sticker, just send me your info, we'll mail it to you, or send me your question. Again, you can put it in a comment, but I really, I really like if you also send it to me an email, because even I, I found how to look, get my comments through my actual like portal, but I see it in it, in it, it comes in my email, and then when I press the blue thing to go over to my portal, some of your comments are not there. I get about 90% of them, but 10% of them are not there. I, they show up a week later, so I have no idea what's going on. But if you send it to me in an email, I will respond to you, whether I'm going to give you my phone number or I answer the question. And again, I cannot stress how important it is to start collecting instruction manuals, the manuals that are inside the front cover, and any addendum manuals or, or addendum sheets or sheets that come with the parts. Get yourself one of them staple multi-partition folders that have the rubber band that closes the front. There's like 14 compartments and I keep, you know, I just put them in there and I tab them and I know which one is which by the tab. It gives me the model number of the unit. Okay? All right, YouTube. I hope you enjoy this video, and you all be safe out there, and I'll see you on the next video. Take care now. Bye-bye.